Hmm, when in Rome, I guess. Hello, YouTube. So today, we'll be looking at Amityville 3D. They do this a lot during the movie. It gets annoying after a while. So, yeah. For the past two years, I've been looking at the Amityville films while also discussing the history of the events that inspired them. And today is the last time I can do that until the remake. Now, okay, it's a very, very loose connection, but there is an investigation in this film which could have partly been inspired by the Warrens investigation of the house. So, yeah, I did some research on that because I wanted to indulge myself a little bit. So, yeah, let's go over the history of that. 20 days after the now infamous 28 days the Lutzes spent in 112 Ocean Avenue, the Warrens were called in to investigate. It was said that Ed Warren was pushed to the floor while reciting some religious passages in the basement. Brain was overwhelmed by a sense of a demonic presence, kept getting psychic impressions of the dead DeFeo's bodies, and also felt like she was being pushed. The research team that accompanied them managed to get a now famous picture of a little boy with white eyes on the stairs, despite there having been no children in the house at the time. The case was seen as one of the major cementers of the house being haunted, but there are holes in it. It mostly hinges on if you believe the Warrens to be legit, and if the research team and camera crew were in on anything or not, as if they were, then most of it can be explained. That said, it boosted the careers of the Warrens and is an important part of the history of the house. So yeah, it might be a very loose connection to this film and it might not have even had an influence on this, but I did still find it kind of interesting and I really like looking into the history of the Amityville house, so I enjoy doing that at the very least and maybe you'll learn something from it, I don't know. But yeah, I've prolonged this long enough, so let's get into Amityville 3. Hmm. So the movie starts off in the most entertaining way possible. A long shot of the house. We have never seen this before except for in the other Amityville movies. Can we move it along? Seriously, this opening shot goes on for far too long. Although, I mean, it gives them a chance to show off their 3D opening credits. Which are just as good as all the other effects in this movie, so, yeah. Also, I did actually try watching this movie in 3D, as there is a version on YouTube that actually does have it in 3D. However, the 3D didn't really work, and the video was in Spanish. So I decided I'll mute the TV and play the English version on my phone and just, you know, watch it that way. Syncing it up was too annoying, and I just gave up after, like, five minutes, but I tried to get the real experience. I would honestly kind of be interested in seeing this movie in 3D, ju just for the fact that it was supposed to be in 3D, and I would like to see how that would actually affect the film at all, but, yeah, pretty much viewing it normally, though, um... Get used to these shots. They're really fun, especially when it's of important things like flashlights. Seriously. So yeah, anyway, this movie opens up after the long, boring shot of the house with a seance. And this is actually probably my favorite part of the movie. At first, it's just, you know, a regular seance. Pretty much everything that you expect to happen is happening. However, then it's all interrupted, but this was actually some journalists bursting in in order to, well, just show off the fact that it's fake. They start taking pictures of everything and just trying to get comments and trying to find and just getting information. It's actually kind of a fun scene, and honestly, I kind of wish that the rest of the movie were like this, sort of playing around with the fact of, is it real or is it all just a hoax, which I think would have been the much more interesting route to go. But, unfortunately, like, another horror movie that starts off like this, that also had a third movie that was in 3D. I'm obviously talking about Scream, but yeah, anyway... So yeah, like a movie that was like that, it opens up well, but let's see the rest. So yeah, it moves on to something that was actually kind of fun and break from the norm to explaining how the Amityville house won't sell because of, well, you know, 
ghosts and crap. So, yeah, it actually does make some sense, and admittedly, this is also a little bit partially based on real life, as the Amityville house has both gone through a lot of ups and downs with sellers, as, well... Fans want the place because, well, obviously it's a really cool place, and also just people like it because, well, it's a house that's normally sold for fairly cheap. However, then you got the fans. Oh my god, the fans of the Amityville franchise. This is why I never want to go to the house. I mean, it'd be cool, and I would, and I mean, like, okay, yeah, I would kind of want to go there and check it out. Trust me, I do, but here's the thing. Everyone in Amityville, even if you don't live in the house, has been harassed over this stuff countless times, up to the point where, yeah, it's just a nuisance. There's even been reports of Fans pissing on their fence for no reason. And yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to add on to the annoyance of that to people who just want to be in a house or in a town. They deserve the right to just live there in peace, and I don't want to disturb that. I do actually kind of like the fact that they are addressing this issue, even in one of their own movies. However, the way they go about it, though, is kind of stupid, because they say it's because of ghosts. Yeah, no, it's not. Seriously, every family that has lived in the house after the Lutzes has had no reports of ghosts. Though they did add a fence, so that's something. Okay, I do like the fact that they're addressing this, but the way they're addressing it is really just kind of annoying to me, because this is actually a real issue with this town, but instead they're just going to add the fantasy to it, which... Yeah, it's just kind of annoying to me, but yeah, anyway, one of the journalists that found out about the seance thing, John Baxter, decides, eh, well, I mean, the place is cheap, and I kind of want a place to live, so eh, yeah, I'll take it, because, uh, I don't know, he, he was there, it's a cheap place, he hasn't looked around for a place, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's a good place, it's cheap, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it's a very on-the-spot decision, which he doesn't really think over at all, but yeah, anyway, his photographer, Melanie, has some objections to this, as well as his ex-wife, Nancy, and they're going through a divorce right now, so yeah, that's just sort of exacerbating things with the fact that Nancy is kind of superstitious about the place because, well, people have died there. It admittedly makes some sense. However, again, the reason is because of ghosts. She is afraid of ghosts. And she decides that because she's superstitious about ghosts, that his daughter can't go to the house. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever, bitch. So, yeah, um, she even says that if he tries to dispute this, she's gonna go get her lawyer. I would love to see this case go to court. Like, okay, so yeah, what's this case about again? Oh, well, some, some mom doesn't want their daughter in this house because people died in it. Well, I mean, like, is there any other reason? Is the father, like, abusive or something? No, no, actually, he's a really nice guy who's actually trying to start up a successful career for himself. But, yeah, no, I mean, like, th the house is scary. We're taking this to court? Yep. I hate my job. That's just how I imagine that that would go. I'm sorry. That is so stupid. Like, why would you even threaten to get the lawyer about this? You're letting your own personal opinion and view on the house affect your own daughter's relationship with her father. I'm sorry. That cannot fly. I mean, I'm not... I mean, I don't know that much about child custody laws. I hope that personal reasons like that wouldn't get in the way of a, a visitation rights. But yeah, whatever. So even though Nancy is against the idea, their daughter Susan goes there anyway to at the very least check out the place and Nancy does not go because seeing the place and seeing if it's actually a force of evil that, that's a dumb idea instead just completely be against your daughter ever going there yeah that, that's smart without any evidence to really back it up I I understand your point there Nancy you're a genius
I don't like Nancy, if that's not clear. So, yeah, anyway. So, Susan picks out a room. It's the eye window room. Woo! Which, according to some random priest who may or may not have been in the house, was so evil that he warned the Lutzes not to put up a room in there. So, instead, they made it into a sewing room. The Baxters were not given the same warning, I guess. And what horrifying things actually happens in this room that even a priest says you should not have any room in or anything? Nothing. Absolutely nothing happens in this room. Yeah. Might have been a touch of a missed opportunity there, just saying. So yeah, anyway, John's actually an aspiring author, and apparently he's been working with Melanie on it. So he invites her over to the house that night. However, he says they might not be there, in which case then, yeah, the house lady's gonna be there to let her in. So yeah, that's pretty much what happened. She gets let in, and the lights go out and the doors lock, and for some odd reason, the maid tries to attack Melanie. We never see why the maid tries to do this, she just does. I assume that she just tries to attack anybody, despite being told that someone might come over that night, so I don't know why she was suspicious of this, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, after that, they just have a calm conversation, because almost getting beat over the head it is obviously something that you can just, you know, get over in like a few seconds, and so yeah, that's when the maid leaves, and Melanie's left there alone, but then something truly horrifying happens. The house opens the door and a gust of wind gets in. <laughs> okay, um, so then the power goes out. And then Susan goes down to check, to, you know, turn back on. And, um, another gust of wind attacks her. Although this time, it's stronger, and coming from inside, and, like, some snow gets on her, and this scars Melanie. <laughs> I have no idea why this would affect her as bad as it does, but she is in hysterics by the times that John gets back, but... Yeah, John actually has his own little encounter with the house, I assume. There's a fly that's in the elevator, and I guess the fly is from the house. So, yeah, it just, you know, flew all the way over here so it could magic up the elevator and make it just really quickly go up. And honestly, this is actually a pretty decent scene. I mean, it's nothing scary or anything, but it does have at least a moderately good sense of tension throughout it. So yeah, after a pretty decent scene, Melanie's in hysterics and leaves, and John does not think that this is weird for some reason. Then Melanie starts doing some research on the place because, uh, I don't know, I mean, I kind of expect someone like John to be doing the research on the place, but yeah, Melanie had a gust of wind blow in her face, you know, truly horrifying. I don't get the scares in this movie. So yeah, anyway, someone dies in the place, and yeah, that kind of faces John, but it seems like he died of natural causes, so it's not that weird. And Melanie finally finds out something about the house when she looks at a photo and there's a face on it. Scary. Yeah, so yeah, that gave her all the answers in the world there, I guess. I don't know. So she drives right over to 112 Ocean Avenue to find, to tell John because, I don't know, the face on the picture was scary? I don't know. Before she can get there, though, there's a fly in the car and the car lights on fire. I feel like could just drove her off the road, but no, fire! And she is completely burned to the bone from this. Don't know how that works. I mean, like, that seems like that would take a little bit more time than that. But, yeah, no, when someone sees her, she's nothing but bones. But she still moves. 
So yeah, I know, right? Skeletons always move, right? That, that happens all the time, right? Yeah, probably. So yeah, anyway, the car sets on fire, and this doesn't even fatigue John. In fact, we never even see his reaction to this. Instead, he's just sort of cool about all this. Because he is totally fine with two deaths relating to either his house or him or an investigation into the house. There is no connection here. Clearly, there is nothing on happening. So, yeah, actually, at this point, I kind of do understand Nancy's side. Two people have died there now. At the very least, now is when you should be getting worried. But she, but she was worried right when she heard about it. So, yeah, I still find her an idiot. But at the very least, it does make more sense now. But now John's the idiot. He's not seeing any connection with two deaths related to the house happening. So, to be fair, one of them was caused by flies, so, yeah. And I do mean that, the, and I do mean that, the guy who sold John the house, he gets killed by the flies. It's wonderful, and I would have loved to have seen the, what actually happened there, but unfortunately, this movie deprives us of that. Yeah, anyway, so Susan goes back to the place with her friend Lisa. Uh, well, really, she brought a friend with her this time, so I mean, her mom probably won't get too mad about this. Of course, she does, but yeah, still, anyway. So yeah, they, so yeah, they went there to talk about the very important information of ghost sex. Nothing else. Just Lisa wanted to see the house because she did some research on it. Amazing. And apparently all of her research came from John's article about it, which was just about a phony seance. I don't exactly get why that would go into the exact details of the DeFeo murders, but yeah, apparently it actually didn't as they got where Dawn died wrong. So, ha, I know more than you, Lisa. Hours of research have finally paid off. So, yeah, anyway, so they go back there the next day, this time with a few more friends, and engage in the very exciting activity of Ouija boards. Ouija boards are... Dumb. I've already gone into this a lot, but I find them really stupid. They can be very easily tampered with, and unless if you let go of the thing, which you're not supposed to do, that's the only time when I, when you can actually slightly convince me that it could be working. But even at that, it can still be rigged, and it's total crap either way. So, yeah, no, I'm sorry. This is just stupid. I don't get why horror movies like using Ouija boards so much, because they're not scary. Because, I mean, seriously, they're just like, this. Ooh, look at this! A thing moved! One of us could have done it, but it moved! Ah! And we're just saying that no one pushed it. The horror. It's stupid. So, yeah, anyway, they, so, yeah, anyway, the ghosts in the house say that Susan's gonna die a horrible death. Oh, I'm in such suspense. So, can this be prevented? Nope, she dies in, like, a half an hour after this. Yep. We don't even see how she dies. She is one of the main characters. Why would they show us why she died? I, yeah, I don't get it either. So apparently she died by just falling off of a boat. I don't know how that happened. It's a really small boat. I mean, like, okay, maybe she could hit her head or something, but I doubt that. I doubt that she was stupid enough to be like, hey, let me just stand up on it and, oh, let me, like, be on one leg or something. That's how, the, that's the only way I can see her falling off of that because this was not that, because seriously, this boat was not that extreme. I mean, it's not like it's even, like, a real big boat or anything. It's actually pretty small and just a normal boat. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't see how exactly this ended up happening, but yeah, anyway, apparently her falling into the water killed her because that's truly the biggest cause of deaths in America. I, I don't know, I mean, I, again, she could have hit her head on something, but even at that, I feel like her friends would have noticed that quick enough to be like, oh, well, we should just get her out, and then they, they get her out. We also don't see any damage on her head, so I doubt that she died that way. So apparently, either a mon so either the monster from the stupid well, which yes, they which yeah, I'll get into in a bit, but 
Because so either the monster from that well dragged her into the water, or she died by just falling in water. Take your pick, it's really stupid either way. Yeah, actually, and kind of also a pretty decent scene. Nancy sees Susan walking up the stairs and back into her room, just saying that she's going to get changed because she's all wet. And that's just a little bit before her body is found. I actually did really find that to be kind of neat and kind of eerie. However, after this, that's pretty much the only eerie moment from this whole film, as now Nancy's just completely crazy because, I don't know, why not? So she's pretty much in a state of delusion now, thinking that Susan didn't really die and is actually preparing some clothes for her and stuff. However, John is pretty much just dealing with the revelation of this and what should be expected from him by now. Not really caring about it. Seriously, we just sort of see him being like, Nancy, Nancy, no, that, that's enough. She's she's gone. We're never gonna get her back. And then she has, and then he has like a nightmare, and, th and that's it. That that's his reaction to his daughter dying. It's just like, don't worry, Nancy, it's gonna be okay. And then nightmare, and that's it. Oh, the horror. And the nightmare is about the well. Guess I should mention this. This movie confirms to us what was truly behind all the evil in the Amityville house this whole time. A well. A well in the basement. That was what was behind all the evil. Now, okay, this could potentially be like the hole in the floor that, that George fell in in the first movie. But even at that, it's a very loose connection. And it doesn't really look anything like that, so... Yeah, this well just came out of nowhere, and now it's the source of all evil because, I don't, I don't know. The well was just a lackey for the lamp, though. That lamp is behind everything. Seriously, I can't wait until next year. That's when we finally get to the killer lamp. I love the killer lamp. So, yeah, anyway, um... Yeah, John brings over his friend, Dr. West... You better believe I was thinking of Reanimator when I heard that, but yeah, anyway, apparently his name was Dr. Elliot West, so yeah, he's not the same. He's kind of fun, though. He's a bit eccentric, so that's something. He's at the very least a moderately kind of entertaining character in this, so I'll take that where I can get, because it's hardly in this movie. So he brings over a research team, and they get to work on finding out what's going on in the house. Yeah, like I said before, this is the closest part of this movie that seems even remotely inspired by any real events that happened. And, yeah, while I do still find it kind of interesting to look up some stuff, it's still very loose. And I'm kind of disappointed that I won't be getting to talk about any historical stuff involving Amityville next year. Because, well, amazingly, no one reported any killer lamps, so, yeah be bummed. So, yeah, um, yeah, they start researching the place, and apparently this is what Amityville wanted, as all of a sudden, some weird purple ball of light and fog starts moving around, and it says that Susan, and sounds like her, so I guess that is Susan? I, I don't know. I guess the house collects the souls of its victims, because... I don't know. The well told it to do it. I don't know. It's never done this before. But yeah, anyway. And no, it'll never do this again either. So yeah, anyway. It's the Susan ghost thingy tells Nancy to follow it to the basement. So, so one thing that I actually kind of noticed that I found was kind of interesting is that at the beginning of the movie, something very similar to this happens. However, there it's all seen as, well, a hoax, which it is. However, here it's actually seen as fact. And I, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of an interesting way of going about it. And maybe if this were a better movie, I could have actually found that really clever, but... Instead, here, Nancy just follows a sphere of light that sounds like her daughter because it told her to, and clearly, this is a good thing. She's an idiot. So yeah, anyway, it leads her down to the well, and Elliot, and Elliot says that John's gotta follow her because, I don't know. Anyway, though, Elliot somehow gets there faster than John or Nancy does. I don't know how that happened. So yeah, the Sphere of Light has now led them to the well, and it's pretty much telling Nancy to join her. 
what she tries to do. You are an idiot. So yeah, anyway, Elliot. So yeah, anyway, Elliot says to hold her back, which yeah, I feel like should have been given, but whatever. So Elliot gets a real close look at the well, and a monster pops out of it and drags him in. So um, yeah. I, was the well behind the house? Was that monster? I have so many questions. Why would this stop this? Why this on? Why this free Susan's soul like he says it would? Why? Just why? But yeah, anyway, this causes ice to come out of it because I don't know, hell's frozen over or something. Who cares anymore? So yeah, anyway, they run out of the house and it blows up. Because the well was ice based, so of course it's using fire. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, the house blows up and we get some real closure on what happened to John and Nancy. They walked away. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, anyway, the final shot of this film is hilarious to me. It's a pan from the door of the house, which is still standing, to the well, which is untouched, but has some fire on it. And then a fly goes by it. A picture of a fly flies by it, and it's glowing purple, just like Susan's ghost was. So... Is this a ghost fly? Is the fly dead now? Do, do, do flies have ghosts? I mean, Paranorman brought the question, but this movie answered it. So, yeah, ghost flies, signifying that it's evil still lasts. <laughs> ghost flies. The horror. The horror of it all. That, it fell out. I'm not gonna bother with that. Seriously, it took ten minutes to get this stupid lens in. I, I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna do this with a half 3D thing now. I don't know. I'll probably fix it in between parts. Anyway, so this movie is something it is something that is for sure okay so i have kind of an interesting experience with this one the first time that i ever watched it it bored me it bored me so much and i was hardly paying attention so i hardly knew what was going on i was like wait what but susan died she was just there and the well was behind monster house blowing up ghost fly what so then i rewatched this movie yesterday and it was fun this movie was actually really fun i mean okay it's seriously stupid and has so many problems like why is the well the cause of everything has it been the evil behind the amityville films ever since the beginning is it still being evil will it ever be utilized again does it matter in the grand scheme of things all these are a no but still i mean it raises so many questions and it doesn't really answer any of them like why was there a monster coming out of the well was that gateway to hell or something like what was that i want to know why exactly did it have an why exactly did it hate Susan? Why couldn't this have just been the regular, the house is haunted sort of thing? Why it had to be like this gateway to hell? And again, I feel like it could have been much more interesting if it instead played around with if this is real or just something that's caused on by what you've heard heard about the house that to me would have been a much more interesting angle and they do seem to bring it up but instead they just never go anywhere with it which is really a shame as i think it could be a very interesting look at both the fan base for amityville and just the series itself however it is so stupid that it's honestly pretty fun i mean it never goes far enough into the realm of so bad it's good that i would have really enjoyed but I still think that it's honestly kind of a fun movie. I mean, at the very least, if you go in with very lowered expectations, which, like I said, I really hated this film when I first watched it. So yeah, going back with that viewing in mind, 
this was a way more enjoyable watch, and I think that's probably the best way to see it. So, go in thinking that this will be the worst in the Amityville franchise, and then you might actually get something kind of fun out of it. I mean, it's not a good story or anything, it's nothing really interesting, I feel like, yeah, it did have potential that if it were embraced more, it could have been a much more engaging story, but as is, it's honestly kind of fun and can't be enough to be enjoyable. So yeah, for the story... I think a 5, because, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's not good, but it does still have some stuff that can save it, especially if you go in not really hoping for much. So, yeah, the story might be crap if a little bit fun, but do the characters make up for that? Huh, let's see. Okay. Ten minutes later, the glasses are fixed. This was satisfying and totally necessary. So, yeah, okay, let's actually get into the characters, starting off with, obviously, the main one, John Baxter. He is not very interesting. I mean, he's fine, but there isn't much to him. His, like I said before, his reaction to his freaking daughter dying is, honey, honey, no, no, it's gonna be okay. I mean, he's a nice enough guy. I didn't hate him or anything. He's just bland and honestly has very odd underreactions to a lot of things. So yeah, that's a major problem with them there too. So yeah, there's not much to him. But then there's his wife, well, ex-wife, Nancy. Hmm, don't touch the lens. Uh, Nancy, as I've stated, is an idiot. For threatening to call her freaking lawyer over the fact that John might want his daughter to come over to his house sometimes, you know, just to visit with her. I'm sorry, I completely disagree with, and her big reason for that? I don't like the house. Yeah, who cares if you don't like the house? I don't care. He should be allowed to see his own freaking daughter, okay? I'm sorry. That's just really uncalled for, but, yeah, I mean, it's not like he's a bad person or anything. Like I said before, he's just bland, so unless if you wanted to die of boredom, then no, I don't think that anything bad will happen to her, at the very least, when he's around. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I really really did not like Nancy for those parts, but does she get better at all when, like I said before, I was a little bit more on her side because, you know, two deaths had happened. Not really. Not really. I mean, then she's just sort of snooty about it, like, I told you so. See, this place is evil. Yes, I was right. Thank God people died or else I would have looked like a real idiot. So, yeah, I mean, like, she doesn't go that far or anything. Obviously, I'm over-exaggerating that, but still, she is like, well, I was right about this, and this is just confirming it, so you can never step foot on that house again. You know, normally when you tell a teenager not to do something, that kind of causes them to want to do it more. I'm just saying. That's exactly what happens. But yeah, after Susan dies, is she at all better? A bit. At the very least now, she has embraced her insanity that I knew was there all along. So, yeah, I mean, then she's just sort of annoying and yelling, Susan's alive! And yeah, that's not overly interesting, believe it or not. So, yeah, either way, I didn't like Nancy. Moving on from her pointlessness. And then we got Susan. She really is just like her father. Bland, and yeah, okay, so she pretty much has like three whole scenes before she dies, and then one scene after. Two, if you count the fact that she's a ghost, but even at that, we don't actually know what that's her, so yeah, it might not be her, so I'm not counting it. So yeah, amazing, she's truly important in this 
film, as you can tell. I mean, heck, okay, so John's photographer has more scenes than her. That is a problem. So, yeah, we're supposed to feel sorry for Susan, but honestly, I didn't really feel anything because I didn't know her well enough. I mean, really, at the end of it, though, she's just not really that interesting. I mean, at the very least, John has some ambitions with Susan. It's just like, she's, um... She sleeps with dolls, apparently. She's a freaking teenager, but yeah, apparently she still has a doll on her bed. I don't know. To be fair, I do have a bear stuffed animal on my bed, but the reason for that is because it's actually a pillow, so yeah, I like actually using it as a pillow. She has like a freaking Raggedy Ann doll, so no, it had to not be utilized as a pillow, so it does not serve a double function, so therefore it is useless. Seriously, I feel like they were supposed to just have her actress be younger or something, but no, they didn't for some odd reason, and I feel like it would have worked a whole lot better if she was actually, but no, no, instead get her to be a teenager, and yeah, she's just not overly interesting to me, and I just never really found her to be engaging. Even after she died, I just wasn't all that interested. Then we got Elliot West. Or Dr. West. Just laying down on the computer. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, um, I loved this character because I got to reference Dr. West a lot. I mean, I honestly, I do that in a lot of movies, but in this one in particular, there was more of a reason. So, yeah, Doc, so, yeah, Elliot West is... Fine. He's a bit eccentric, honestly, which I think is probably why he's one of the more interesting characters to me, but still, there's not all that much to him. He just sort of stands out a bit more, and also his death is pretty great. Seriously, he, like, sacrifices his life for this family that he hardly knows. It's, it's pretty great. Also, he dies in a pretty brutal way by getting burnt and then getting dragged down into, like what I said before, I assume is the pits of hell. So, yeah, I feel really bad for this completely innocent guy who John called insane for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, like, he was yelling about it, but he was right, so why call him? and see whatever so yeah Elliot is honestly one of the better characters in this to me and one of the more enjoyable ones so yeah I at the very least enjoyed his part in this and he's definitely one of the more reasons that I kind of found myself enjoying this movie more as the first time I watched it I forgot that he even had a name so yeah also then I hadn't seen reanimator so his last name being Wes and him being a doctor just I, I didn't even have any ref I didn't even have any thing to say about but now I made like five references yes reanimator is great one day I'll talk about those movies but that day is not today instead we're talking about crappy haunted house movies clearly far superior so yeah anyway after that is Melanie She's a photographer. She gets really scared by a gust of wind. Ooh. She's not overly interesting. So, yeah, I mean, she's fine, too. I mean, like, her actress is at the very least good, and actually a lot of the actors in this are pretty good, but still, she's just not overly interesting either. She's just sort of easily scared off from the house, but then also wants to go back there because she saw the ever-important bit of a face in a picture, and that revealed everything. I don't know. So yeah, she's not all that interesting of a character, but yeah, I can't say that I hated her or anything. And yeah, her dying was honestly kind of sad. So then we got Lisa. She's there. She's played by Meg Ryan. That's something. There are actually quite a lot of actors in this that went somewhere far better. So I feel way, so I actually feel pretty good for them. But uh, yeah, Lisa, she has the very important role in this film. 
of talking about ghosts having sex. Truly, she's important. So, yeah, Lisa is alright. I don't hate her or anything, but she's just not overly engaging. I feel like I've broken record right now, but yeah. So, yeah, for the characters in this, two. There aren't that many that are really interesting, and all the performances are good enough. I mean, there's nothing that's really standouts in this, and none of them are overly memorable in any way, or even have any lines that are really that impactful. So, yeah, none of them are overly interesting in this, and don't make the film any more engaging, but they also don't make it any less boring, really. So, at the end, they're just sort of, eh. So, for this film overall, it is very mixed, honestly. I mean, originally, I thought that I was just going to say that it was horrible, but upon a rewatch, I actually enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought I would. I don't know, maybe I've seen a whole lot more crappy movies in the past few years, I don't know. But still, this is a way better film than I think that gets any of the credit for, at the very least for being super campy, which I found to be kind of enjoyable. That said, though, it's probably best to watch it with lowered expectations, because if you don't, then, yeah, it's pretty much what everyone says it is. Crap. Because, really, when I watched this movie, kind of expecting a good film, because I was like, oh, well, it's one of the more earlier Amityville films, so maybe it's pretty good. Then you won't get any of that. It's very, it's a very weird story that doesn't really go anywhere or is very memorable in any way. The effects are pretty dated, honestly. While there are some decent ones that are practical, all the 3D stuff feels very pointless. And also, the characters aren't very engaging. And really, it's just kind of a boring movie overall. That said, though, like I said, re-watching this, it was way more fun than I remembered. So, like I said, watch it with very lowered expectations. Like, hardly expect anything from this movie, and then you might have a little bit of fun with it. I know that I'm saying, I know that the way I'm saying it makes it sound like it's way better than it is, but, yeah, it's really not. It has a lot of problems, but I think that it had some potential while playing around with the whole is everything that's happening here real or not? As I feel like that could have been a very interesting subject to have died further into. Instead, though, they don't really keep it... Instead, though, they kind of make it pretty black and white as to what's happening, and I feel like they could have explored that gray area a whole lot more to make it much more of a fascinating film. But, yeah, overall, it's okay at best. I mean, it's still not that good, but I definitely enjoyed it much more upon a rewatch. So... For this movie, so for this movie overall, I mean, like, what else was I gonna give it? I mean, come on, it's in 3D! 3D! Woo! 3D is really stupid in this movie. So, now we are done with Amityville 3D. And next time, I will be reviewing a film I have been trying to freaking review ever since my first October doing this. I mean that. Something always gets in the way, but this year might finally be the year that we look at the Adams Family. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so yeah. See you then. Bye. So, um, yeah, right after this review... I touched the lens. <sighs> I hate these.